today's webinar is sponsored by BCFB. Thank you to Elisa Hutton and BCFB um, and all the folks at BCFB for what they do for um, food processors and brands in British Columbia. And thank you for allowing us the chance to be able to talk to the brands. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sumner Frizzell. I'm the Events and Program Specialist with BC Food and Beverage. So happy to have all of you here with us today. And I am pleased to welcome back Phil and Kenny from This Commerce Life. And they have a great presentation for us today. So I will uh, let you take it away. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Sumner Frizzell is going to take a minute. It is. Yeah, I know. That's that's a work through my brain. Yeah. But congratulations, Sumner. Yeah. <laughs> if you're all just joining us, Sumner got married not long ago, right? Uh, about yeah, coming up to like two months. So still two pretty months. new. Two months. Yeah. Okay. Oh that's yeah. Okay. Right. That's right. That's right. Oh, I I know why because we talked to you after you got back from your honeymoon. That's yes. right. That's what it yeah. was. Got that's it. Cool. Got it. Okay. Got cool. It. Cool. Um. Thank you for joining us today. Kenny and I are going to do a topic that I think sometimes causes a lot of anxiety, um, but it's probably why we wanted to do it, because it was something that um, shouldn't cause you anxiety. It probably does. Um, but, uh, you know, and so we wanted to cover annual planning. Um, we wanted a chance to be able to talk to you about um, how to think about it and how to approach it. So let me just um, as I talk, I will share my screen here and make sure we got everything kind of moving the way it's supposed to. Um, and so we're we're going to talk through annual planning. Um, there are moments where even Kenny may look surprised because I probably changed the presentation on him too. I just saw uh, the summer. Summer, you got you you got the you got the legit version, but I think Kenny and I talked about it before. I made it legit, so he may look surprised. But I saw it this morning. It looked fantastic. Did. I didn't realize. Okay, done, excellent. I didn't realize excellent. we had done that well. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we had. Okay, we so have. we're going to talk to you about annual planning. Um, annual planning is an exercise that is for every company. So um, Kenny and I both come from places where um, annual planning is a thing. We do it every year. Um, takes three months you know it takes three months you know people hate you because you put blackout dates in their calendar um you know you can't go anywhere because you got to be around to answer questions and you know blah 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 um it doesn't need to be that kind of a rigmarole but there should be a process and a way of thinking about this that allows you to kind of set yourself up for success into the new year um um, a little bit about us. We're This Commerce Life. We are a podcast first and foremost. Um, we uh, love Canadian retail. Um, we spend a lot of time talking to Canadian brands, Canadian entrepreneurs, Canadian retailers, um, folks that support the space. We are very obsessed with the space. We think we've got amazing, amazing, amazing people um, and we need to spend more time um, talking about it. So that's what we're doing. We do a lot of talking. Um, we do a lot of retail insights. So you'll see uh, if you sign up for our, our newsletter at thiscommercelife.com, the middle of every month, we do retail learning stuff where we share things um, very similar to this, like annual planning. We talk about the four Ps. We talk about all sorts of things. Um, you know, kind of what it takes to build and succeed in the Canadian landscape. And then finally, both of us are around um, for help, right? So if you need help, you need temporary strategic help. We're both here. Um, neither of us like to do things long term. So we like to get in, get out, help you fix what we can. We also know that small, medium businesses get taxed um, with uh, with you know, with lots of people wanting to show up and spend lots of their money for a long time, neither of us are in it for that. So if you ever need something and you need a quick fix or you need us to just look at something, uh, give us a call. We're, we're happy to, to help. Probably, we'll, probably we more, we'll, we'll probably end up helping you more than you think, but yeah, yeah give yeah. us a pause if you need some, some yeah. stuff. Okay. So um, let's set some, let's set some expectations for this, um, for this call. We want to teach you about annual planning. Um, but this isn't an Excel template exercise. So there will be no Excel templates for you to um, 
you know, to copy and paste or macro or <laughs> there's no formula compilations here, um, but it is a thinking and a methodology exercise we want to be able to go through with you. Um, it's also not an emotional exercise. And I guess what um, we mean by that is it's not really a moment to explain every speed bump or hurdle or corner you've had to turn. Um, we, we, have no illusions that that running your own business, um, small or medium or large, isn't full of speed bumps, hurdles, and all of those sort of things. But I think um, I think at at this point for us, it's it's really uh, it's it's more about how do we maintain some uh, a more straightforward approach towards um, you know how you go about planning. Yeah. Because okay. it did Good. start at one point, it's, it got really bogged down into, into trade, which is too granular, I think, at this level. We want to make sure it's from a very high level that you are actually thinking about this. Because I, 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 we've been involved in small business long enough, and it typically does get missed. And it's a really important part. Okay. So annual planning is a critical component to making sure you're successful. Um, it an annual plan gives you um, allows you to set a target. It gives you some direction. Um, it allows your teams to know where you want to go. Um, that's critically important. Um, and then, you know, this is a, a fun graphic, but an important one is that for the most part, all the arrows are moving the same way. So um, I think of a, something that Kenny and I think about all the time is if you, if you're, if you're at the point you're at now and you've had moments where you're going um, with any team member where you go, what, why are you pointed? Like, why are you not on the right page? Sometimes it's about how clear you've been with the plan, for example. Um, that's a really common indicator that maybe we didn't all know what the plan was. Right, Kenny? I think it feels to be very kind. I think because I, when we run our businesses, if the team doesn't understand or is not thinking the same way that, that you want them to be, it typically lies with us. We've miscommunicated somewhere. And I think that's the part where we're trying to look at, especially when you get into annual planning, is that nobody will know where you want to go if you haven't told them where you want to go. Like, and that's really what this is all about, is making sure that everybody has a roadmap and it's the same roadmap. Now, once you start driving, you may have to take a different road, et cetera, but you need a destination, you need a target, yeah. you need somewhere to go. And I know we all think what we all have a loosey-goosey one, but I think what we're trying to impress is that this does need to be formalized a little more than just loosey-goosey. It needs to be something that everybody on the team can open or look at. It's on the wall or something saying, okay, I get it. I know where we're going. And then again, if a road changes, a road changes, but at least the direction is the same. Mm -hmm. Keep going, Phil. Okay. Uh, okay. So where to begin, right? Um, annual planning, goodness, right? So annual planning starts at the beginning of the year. So it really means that what we've got to do is start pretty soon um, if you haven't started already. Um, and then in bigger businesses, this tends to be something that we do a lot earlier in the year. Um, you know, in some of the like Fortune 500s, um, you know, this is something that we start, you know, way back in like June, May, June, um, for, for small mediums, that's probably not necessary. Um, but it is something that, that you know, we're kind of at the beginning of November. It's something you got to think about, um, Actually, I, to activate my little thumbs up there, but somehow I that we're going to share the slides later. So I think what, what the important, like when we worked for larger companies, like Phil said, this process would have been started May, June and it's formalized by now for sure realistically probably at the end of august most yeah. small businesses if you haven't started doing it now you should because you don't want to start the plan for the beginning of the year at the beginning of the year it should be getting done right now so you have an idea of where you want to go so just to be very clear most big companies this is long buried 2024 is buried it's locked in solidified so yeah. We need to start thinking even small businesses that way. Let's get our stuff together and figure out where we want to go sooner than later. Back to where to begin, exactly where you are, right? Exactly where you are. What, where, where are you right now? How are you doing? 
relative to where you would be or could be. So Phil and I started, when we looked at this, we were saying, well, what do we really need to do or really need to understand? So where if I'm looking right now, it's November, what are we on? November 2, I think, is I yeah. would look and say, okay, if I want to know where I'm going to be in 2024, I should really look at how did I do in 2022, right? In 2023 year to date, as I am right now, how am I doing right now relative to probably 2022, but also relative to what I said I was going to do in 2023. So in 2022, around this time, I said, if I was a million dollars that year, I'm going to be $2 million at the end of 2023. So 10 months into the year, I should be at, what does that work out? Let's say 850 or whatever the numbers is where I should be sitting. So if I'm not there, why? If I am there, that's great. And where am I going to end at the end of the year? Will I hit that million? or whatever number I had determined. And then I start to look at, okay, based on all that, what am I going to do next year? Right? So it's looking at those numbers. You need to have year-to-date sales, what your growth was, what it was projected to be, how did you do, how did you get there, and what's it going to look like by the time you get to the end of the year. And most of the stuff I'm assuming, Phil, should be relatively easily accessible. Like if you're using... I guess, old fashioned spreadsheets, or if you're using, um, what's the accounting program that most people use? The one you get the reports from, I can't think of the name right now. I'm a marketer. I don't know if you should ask me what the finance programs are. Or ask, ask the accountant. Quick QuickBooks. Books. Quick yes, books. yes, thank you. Quick yeah. books. I, mean, I, could, I could not for the life of me think, can you tell I'm not the accountant either? I know how to, I know how to get the data, but I can't remember the program name. So who's ever running QuickBooks? That's who we need to talk to. We need to see numbers. If if you ever want to wonder what happens in a partnership when you've got a sales marketer and a marketing salesperson is, oh, that's the argument is who 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 has the login for QuickBooks because neither one wants it. So, uh, <laughs> which is why we have a um, keeper there. <laughs> yeah, but but um, so Kenny's right, right? So um, you know the metrics of what he's saying: year to date sales. Um, growth percentage uh, versus last year, and then a run rate versus last year. Some things that you want to think about along the way is um, as soon as you start looking at those metrics, probably the next question is, do I do that on dollars or units? Um, we can't really tell you how to do that in your own business. What I would say to you is theoretically, when we look at these things, units tells a different story than dollars, for example. So um, if you are a company that has um, put together a price increase this year, which I feel like everybody has, then your dollars, for example, will change your outlook versus your units, right? So if you put together a, a price increase and you went up 20%, 30%, for example, then all of a sudden your year to date sales number will jump but your unit sales may not. So I think you; um, those are some things that you're going to want to think about as you're putting these together um, so that you actually have a good picture of where what you're thinking about. Hey, Kenny? 100%. Yeah. Um, and I think the other things uh, that we have there is this is a moment when you want, if you have a team, um, an accountant, a bookkeeper, um, someone who's familiar with your numbers and your business, you probably want them involved. If you have a marketer or a sales manager, you want them involved. And then what you really want is, um, you know, what we were saying on the last page about this is not um, an emotional exercise. Um, so um, for a sales manager, it might be the one that got away, the deal that got away, or the deal that didn't never closed, or, um, you know, how a buyer didn't get back. We, we, while you care about that, you don't care about that, right? Like this is not a a fault finding mission. This is about truly where are you at this moment, right? Um, you know, are you going to hit the numbers? Um, you know, did your plan that you wanted to hit, did you hit it? Um, you know, so those are big things. And then we um, can't be bigger fans of finance folks because we think um, finance folks tend to see things that um, us sales marketers, we see more fancy things. And the finance people like to keep it really real. Um, so sometimes it's hard to get their feedback, but it's absolutely necessary in this process. Also keep you grounded because as typical marketers or salespeople, shiny object 
or the number that looks the greatest on paper is the yeah. number that we want to go with, but not that's not necessarily the reality we live with. And finance or typically someone in accounting will say, well, listen, tell me how you're really thinking that number is going to make any sense. You did a hundred grand this year. How did you think you're going to do a hundred million next year? I mean, it looks great on paper, but is there rationale and reality behind it? Now, and if there is, God bless it. If there's not, then it's again, take the emotion out, put it something down that it's a true a true map to get us to mm -hmm. someplace, wherever that place might be. Okay. So this is going to be a lot more philosophical today. We're not going to run through a, like a number sheet, but we will give you examples of how we do it with some of the companies that we actually run together or own together. I think as we mm -hmm. go through. Mm -hmm. We will. This is um, a lot nicer than it was yet two days ago. <laughs> We did that, Kenny. Um, oh, did. Thank you. I'm glad we did such good work on this. So, wow. so take things from from the last page and bring it with you to this page. So, based on the last page, um, are you happy with how you're growing? Um, you know, are you are you achieving the growth that you anticipated? Um, what are you hoping to achieve for the remainder of the year? And then, what do you want for next year? Um, and so, are you happy? with how you're growing, there's kind of like a bunch of things in here, right? One is, you know, from a target perspective, you know, you're kind of like 11 twelfths of the year through the year, right? So are you 11 twelfths through your number, for example? Um, you know, so are you on track to finish the year the way you want to finish? Um, and then did you do what you hoped you would do, right? So if you were hoping for 30% growth, are you close to that number? Um, you know, because that, an, an, it unearths a bunch of things that help you think about what you need to do next year, for example. Um, and then, you know, what's the end of the year look like? So how are you going to land the plane? How are you going to close the year? Um, and then finally, like, you know, if you were happy with what you did this year, what makes you happier next year? Uh, is it to repeat the number? Is it to double that number? Is it to triple that number? Maybe do 10% growth, 20% growth? Um, you know, things that you need to think about. Now, if you're looking at this, like a lot, if you're looking at this and saying to yourself, holy shit, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know any of these because I really didn't do a more formalized plan the year prior, just mm -hmm. so we're all here. Most small businesses don't, mm -hmm. which is why we really thought when we talked to summer, why this one was such an important webinar to do is that don't worry about it. You can't fix what you didn't do, but mm -hmm. you can't fix what you're going to do. Because mm -hmm. these questions are very basic questions and need to be answered. If you are happy with how you're growing, why? Because are you achieving the growth you anticipate? Well, I don't really know. I'm just up for last year. That's great. What were you hoping to be? And if mm -hmm. you didn't have a hope or an aspiration because you didn't plan it, this is our opportunity for next year to do this. So you can actually go back and say, listen, you know, I shouldn't have taken that road. It was longer than I thought it was going to be. We should have taken this road. It was more scenic, whatever it is. But that's why I really want to make sure that don't be discouraged if you can't answer these. It just means you're in a place where most small businesses are, which is most don't plan. They just go. But we want to try to help you get thinking that it's really important to get this down on paper. You, you're actually, and Kenny, like that one's... Um... Because Phil, that's us. We've done that. Yeah. Like if like if we think about the tea business, right? So if you guys don't know, Kenny and I own, uh, we're, we're co-founders in a business called Old Growth Beverages. It's a microground tea. Um, and we're a little company, right? Uh, we're a little company that um, somehow after freelancing and then podcasting and, um, you know, doing all those things, we, we somehow find time to run this tea business you don't always get time, right? You don't get time to do the things that you want to do, but there are ways to measure that, right? So you can still measure things like, so if you don't know, so let's say you're going to finish the year with a million bucks and you kind of go, I think I'm kind of sort of where I was last year, or I'm kind of sort of, but I've done a little bit better than last year. The things that you can answer along the way that will help you with some of this stuff is, did I bring on new customers that I really love? right? Um, we're freelancers. Sometimes you take jobs that um, you think are going to be good. Um, and then the customer turns out to be a nightmare or there's something, you know, that um, isn't working or um, you thought something was going to be a lot of work and it turned out to be a little work. So mentally, you've got a place where you go, 
I'm not happy with that change. I'm not happy with that adoption. I'm not happy with how that went, or I'm super happy and I didn't know that this was going to happen. So any of those things help you in this process. It helps you figure out what you want more of so that you can actually start to put some numbers to that. Um, you know, in our case, for example, we started leaning into SEO um, and we're a little business, right? So it started with a trickle. It's starting to turn into a bit of a flow and we're excited about that, right? So I don't have a target number, but what I do have is I know the SEO works for us. I know it's turning into sales and we like it. Um, we're going to lean into it, right? So that helps me from a qualitative exercise that before the end of the year, we'll put a number to that to say, so how much more SEO? What do I want to drive out of that number, right? And that helps you get to a target. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that's what you need to bring here. Um, and then, you know, if you think about next year and you say, well, I, I don't know what I did this year, um, but I want to do better next year. What you can do on this page um, that's important is, particularly if you sell to retailers, for example, a really good example is for someone to go, you know what, I, I've, I've gotten to most of the natural um, local folks in BC that I want to be able to sell to. And I want to get to Georgia, Maine next year. Okay. Really basic example, right? Um, at that point, you know, on this page, you'll go, cool, right? Um, when we start getting into this, the next page, I think it's the next page or the next uh, couple of pages is, then there's some questions that will help you get to a number, right? Because, you know, Georgia, Maine, well, if we dive deeper, it's like, well, how many stores is that? How are you going to get there? What kinds of people do you need to engage to make that happen? And that'll help you turn what you know right now into a real number for next year that sets a target for you. Right. Because it'll force you to think. Georgia Maine's 30 stores. Right. Is it all 30? Is it the IGA side? Is it the Fresh Street side? If it's a Fresh Street side, does it lend better to my business than the IGA side, et cetera, right? But again, to Phil's point, once you start grinding it, you can quantify much easier so that we can actually get a better map made to final destination. Keep it in going. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, so this is what I was saying. So um, why does this matter? Um, the answers in the last page serve as an indicator for how much fuel you need to get to your next stage of growth. Okay. And so no answer is too small. No answer is too big. Kenny just gave you a Georgia. I gave you the Georgia main. Kenny filled in some of the details. Um, it tells you what you're going to need. So if you're in that situation, you go, um, I know I grew. I don't know how much, but I grew versus last year. And I think I'm going to be in good shape. I think I'm going to go to Georgia, Maine next year. Um, you know, to Kenny's point, right? Now you need more info, right? How many stores are you going to? How many, you know, what does that equate to in terms of packages, people, marketing, sales, distribution, bigger facility, all of these things they change what you do. And then uh, ultimately it gives you a difference in your number, right? Because now you could say, well, I want to be in all 30. Well, what does that mean for me from an average store sales per store? And then you can look at the number you made this year and that starts to turn into something bigger. Kenny, anything? Yeah. So look at the, and, again, and I think what the part that gets missed here mm -hmm. is if you decide to go into Georgia, Maine, let's say that's just one small chain, but let's say it is all 30 stores and you've sold X amount of packages last year. I don't know how much package you have coming into this year. How much more package do you need? How are you paying for this? If I'm going to do Georgia, Maine, and let's say Joyce and Mike say, well, listen, we also need field coverage because our stores don't, don't work well if they don't. Well, that means I got to get to Madeira. I got to get to uh, Port Hardy. I've got to go to Valmont as well as the Lower Main. Then how am I mm. going to do this? Am I doing this brokers? Am I doing this with my own team? Who's going to do this? Do I have enough raw ingredients to make sure I can actually do this new said business? And if it's a volatile market, like right now in BC, good luck trying to find sugar with a strike. Imagine that table sugar. We can't find table sugar right now because Rogers is out. You know, did anybody plan for that? Does that, that's an anomaly, something maybe we don't foresee which will come up to, but that stuff needs to be looked at. If you're in a, an area that um, cocoa and you're doing chocolates and cocoa is going through the roof, 
are you going to be able to buy enough to sustain this growth? And are you buying it at today's dollars or tomorrow's dollars? And what does that look like? So all these little things build into it. It's not just a matter of putting on a piece of paper. I did a million. I'm going to do two. Great. How? And you're going to tell me how I'm going to get this store, this store, this store, this store. Is that realistic? 100%. Great. How are you going to fuel it? Because all these other things now come into play. Do I have the funds? Do I have the money coming in? Is there enough cash flow? Yada, yada, yada. Again, it's not to scare. It's just to really understand that without the plan, what you don't need is to get sideswiped with huge hits of funding that you can't do because you weren't ready for it or not thinking about it. So the I, I'm going to say, actually, that I think the arrows on this page actually are they they don't quite flow the same way. So so I have this going, you know, kind of all one way, but the truth is it actually goes both ways, right? And it goes this way because more than likely if you if you don't have a target and you're trying to get to a target, it's this um this middle column is where you're really going to wind up, right? Is that's how you're going to articulate what you need, right? Or your growth because you're going to say, you know, we um it could be as simple as this. It could be, I'm really happy with my growth this year. I landed at a bunch of retailers. I'm where I want to be, but I'm stretched really thin. I don't have enough people to do what I have to do right now, right? And so that becomes, if you kind of like move um, you know, to the left on this, the answer of if you want to grow becomes, well, if I need two more people, what do I need to grow to pay for the two more people? and then hold everything the way it is, right? Um, and that's potentially an answer that you need. Or it's, um, I want more retailers, which means I'm gonna need more people, I'm gonna need more, 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 more. Um, Kenny, am I making sense? Yeah, totally. It's it's um, all of it, it's looking at all yeah. those things, because all these things come into play. My my worry is always the same, and trust me, the reason we, we do this one, because we've done this. Like we've, we've been on the side where you just go and you just do, and your plan is well, I'm going to grow. Well, I, that's not a plan. That's a statement. And that's a dream. And we've yeah. got into that spot where we shit, we ran out of packaging. Okay. What do we have money? Like, were we ready for yeah. this? Why, why yeah. Phil, why did we run out of packaging? Yeah. What sales did we not see? Well, we knew we were going to get that account. We just didn't think about it. We didn't, if we had put it down, we probably would have covered our butts because we know the planogram was open yeah. here. We were hoping to get accepted here, which meant were we ready to go when said tick mark came through? Just so we're clear, obviously we missed that one, as you can tell by our discussion. Because again, sometimes this is do as I say, not as I do. You've got to sit and plan the stuff, yeah. right? And yeah. after all these years of us being in this business, we still miss things because there's times where you just get bogged down or you shit happens and you forget that yeah i've got to i've got to think of these things if you want to expand into to alberta how new distributor do we need brokers like how are we going to do this and again how are we going to fund all this yeah yeah i think we harped um, enough on this one it's very similar to the last page that way right we've yeah so this you know this is this is pretty important um okay and like someone uh, asked we'll send this to you later if there's questions you yeah. can always ask us for sure, for sure. And then, uh, okay. And then what should be part of this exercise is a couple of things, right? Is Kenny's kind of alluded to it already is there's um, there's unforeseeable and there's, um, you know, is it unforeseeable or did you not see it? Um, and the difference is something like there's no water in the Panama Canal, okay, is unforeseeable. Who would think that, right? Maybe a climatologist, maybe an environmentalist, but for most folks who work in retail, that is not a consideration for me that Panama, the Panama Canal might not have water, right? But just so you know, but, in case you didn't know, this is factual. So we had containers stuck in the Gulf because they couldn't get through the canal. And we had to divert back up through Halifax and Montreal to get it to Vancouver because the water levels are too low to allow shipping through. Right. I, 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 the last thing I would have thought yeah. of was that. Yeah. That's an unforeseeable yeah. that is completely outside of my control. Yeah. A war but, in the Middle East, if you have stuff coming from those, any countries in that, I didn't see that. 
So but that can impact our number and out of control. But there is some stuff when you get into ingredients, did you just not see it? Right now, there's flags going up over on cocoa and coffee that they're telling us there, there's stuff happening and prices are probably going to change. So that's visible right now and potentially in your control if you have money. If you don't have money, it might be out of your control. But things like that need to be looked at and viewed, hopefully seen ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other side, right? Is it within your control or truly out of your control? So these are things that you got to think about during the plan. Um, is it within your control? You know, these 30 Georgia main stores, for example, um, you know what you can get listed in all 30. If you get listed in all 30 and you run out of packages, it's probably within your control, right? You could have seen that you were getting listed. You probably needed a forecast to be in place so that you knew you would have enough. Um, but uh, like out of your control in that situation might be, um, I don't get listed. I don't get listed or it's not up to me. It was up to the buyers or a retail chain gets in trouble and goes out of business, for example, or someone Probably, buys. Them. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Out of your like control. Any of those. Right. Yeah. So and if, we, and if we look at those two specifically, what we always tell our teams, the sales and marketing teams, when, if we're doing projects like this and if you, him and I are sales and marketing is we put probabilities down okay seriously Phil do you really think we can get Georgia Maine it's a 50 50 okay if it's a 50 50 how hard do we want to bake this number into our model correct, correct. if you think it's 90 percent sure we're going to get it then I think we should hard code this we should bake this in hard like this number needs to be a part of the plan if it's a 50 50 how do you want to do it because I also don't want to go and spend against something that really is out of my control. But I can't not prepare for something that could happen. So I know it sounds a lot of wishy-washy at times, but there's a lot of stuff you really have to think of. And when you're doing it, really try to take a look at the world you're in. Look at your raw materials. Do you foresee problems? With well, your think, listings, is it really in your control and put weight against the numbers you're going to put in because you're going to build your plan around that? Yeah, I, I think the one to me that, you know, we're we're, we're pretty people first um, employers, too, because we we really, you know, we we try and make sure that we're always around for our people. Right. And so you kind of like, you know, within your control. Like if we've been places where we've we've decided, you know, we've looked at a probability and said it's 50-50 and the two of us would say, don't hire somebody, right? Um, don't, if it's 51-49, don't hire somebody because if it doesn't turn out to be one, you've expended a ton of effort to hire someone and that person has come on the expectation they're going to make a living doing something for you and there's nothing to make a living on. Right. So there's there's a whole bunch of things in there that, you know, are kind of just terrible situations to be in. Right. So um, so this slide is about that because we were we're kind of like, you know, you've got to you've got to imagine these things and think about what it could mean to you. Right. Um, the net effect, uh, if I can go back a slide is, you know, the the flow through is here. Right. Is if you kind of go, I'm I'm 50 50, I'm going to get more retailers, but I'm pretty sure I need more people. All of a sudden, you you get into a place where you go. Maybe I hired um, salespeople, but what I really need is a broker, um, or I hired more salespeople, and what I really need is a marketer. I hired a marketer, and what I really need is more salespeople. Um, there's a whole bunch of combos here that, if you aren't planning through your business and you intend to make a big leap or a big bound, um, and you haven't quantified it, you could get yourself in not just financial trouble but just even you know kind of that emotional trouble if you if you're it's trying to be a good employer trouble. yeah if you're trying to be you know kind of good to your people this this one can really hurt actually you know there's kind of nothing worse than knowing that you've brought somebody and they have nowhere to go or that they're not kind of set up to succeed um that's a kind of a terrible thing to kind of make them have them worry about so Okay, so we are pretty close to the end. We, we've got some key takeaways from this. And then we intentionally wanted to leave room for questions because we know what we're doing here is uh, a way of thinking, but it probably generates more questions than it does answers. 
Um, so we wanted to leave, um, you know, some time here. Um, data points that you want to consider, um, you know, make sure that you've got um, the proper viewpoint of units versus dollars, how you look at those. Um, you want a year to date discussion happening. You want a, how are we going to land the plane discussion happening so that you know where you're going to finish the year. And then you want an emotional, uh, if you don't have a, quantifiable um, comparison from the year before, you want at least an emotional one to say, I'm happy or I'm unhappy with the progress that I've made this year. And then that'll put you into yeah. the plan for next year. Now you'll know all the things that bugged me, all the things that I loved and how do I want to look next year? And then we build our plan accordingly. Um, then you want, what you want to do is then um, take the things that you, you know, all of those things, the emotional bits, the factual bits, all of that, um, and then start testing against where you want to go next year. So if I want to grow um, 25 or 30%, what does that, how does that express itself? So um, growth doesn't come from nothing. Um, you know, so if you're kind of where you are now and you're going to keep doing the things you do, it's actually, um, uh, if I can take a minute, like it, this is kind of how we got into trouble with um, you know, some of the pandemic numbers, right, is, you know, we we all sold stuff during the pandemic, and um, it, it did great, you know, in a lot of businesses, we we took off, and our online numbers were crazy. But then you, you had brands who planned on continuing that momentum, but couldn't answer the question of how do we get there. So if you subtract a pandemic from the number, they didn't do anything different to get that growth number, right? So um, so when you're planning, if you want to plan for 25% growth, what are you doing 25% more of that's going to get you that number? Did I kind of, I, hopefully one with the pandemic stuff, I don't mean to be indelicate about it. Um, there's no uh, intention there to make people uncomfortable, but I do think it's important that you kind of go, it's not enough to say, I'm going to grow. It has to be, I'm going to grow 25%. What am I going to do different? I'm going to go out and get a banner and that banner is worth X number of dollars or units to me. And that's how I'm going to grow this 25. Or it's, I've thought about the new way I'm going to do marketing that's going to be able to drive some you know inbound traffic to me that allows me to account for that 25% growth. You're just going to make sure that you're factoring those things in as you grow your, your plan. Just so you know, we did go through that with somebody that they that what they looked at is, well, we grew 25%, we should do another 25. And our first response was, I, I know, but that wasn't fueled by anything we did. That was sort of like an yeah. act of God. I mean, and not a pleasant one for a lot of people, but we we really didn't do anything to deserve it. I mean, we were in stock and we did our thing, but by you know, if that doesn't repeat, it's not just because you want it, it's gonna happen. Well, when and and when we ran the numbers and we said if we subtract out what we think is pandemic buying, their growth number was three percent, right? Um, but they planned yeah, for thirty percent growth. Yeah, but they planned for thirty percent growth, which meant they were going to spend thirty percent more on bodies, on supply, on materials, um, which got them into trouble later, right? So, um, so those things are really important. Um, it's it's also why it's really important to do this exercise. So you don't find yourself in a place where you're like, I plan for 30% growth. I spent 30% more and now I, I don't have enough, right? I'm, I'm in trouble. Um, you know, those are things. Um, I think the last one that we were communicating was around um, key factors that will get in the way of your growth. How many of those can you affect? And then how many things you have to bank risk on that you don't have any control over actually. Um, so those things are things that we have to think about as well. Um, and then finally, don't forget to communicate the plan to your teams if you have any. Um, you engage them in the beginning. They helped you with some of the run rates and you know those sort of things to get calculations. Um, and then we want to you know, make sure that you communicate back. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the plan. We're going to go after Georgia Maine, all 30 stores, right? So if you guys are all here, this is what you need to do to help us rally resources or talk to people, you know, all of those sort of things that help plans come together. Um, so we we left a lot of time. We're at 240. We actually ran a little bit fast as well. So, um, but we, we um, just wanted to make sure we left lots of time because we know 
this topic is um spooks people more than not sometimes. yeah it can really freak people out and so we just wanted to make sure we left enough time for for you guys to ask any questions if there's um you know or if you want to tell us we're dead wrong that might hurt our feelings a little um but <laughs> probably not <laughs> yeah we're okay. any we're okay with being wrong any any questions you can find us these are our contacts here if you wanted to ask us any questions or you wanted us to eyeball anything for you are there any questions for us and feel free to unmute yourself as well if you feel like you can't type fast enough because you're also we might not be able to read fast enough <laughs> there's that too well thank you that's very nice of you thanks Sharon we appreciate that yeah we uh thanks Brenda we worried about this one because we we know that this is a topic that everyone thinks about, um, but lots of people hate this topic too because it it can bring a lot of chaos and then sometimes it um, creates some minutia because you don't know. You start looking at numbers and you can get, um, believe you me, we've we've been places where you can argue over run rates and how you forecast an ending, um, and that can take up a long time. Um, Raman, you've got a, a question. Yeah, well, thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, very informative. Uh, we're actually at that stage right now as we speak. So so it's a good thing that uh, we're pretty much on the same page and that we're going through some of those checklists as you spoke. Uh, okay. However, we're running into a few challenges. Uh, we had a very challenging year, so we expanded our facility and uh, it took time for the new equipment to, to start running. Uh, for that reason, we lost some of the orders. Uh, so, so what would be your strategy? So, so how would you go back to those customers that you, you wanted to bring in? Because you mentioned there are some customers that you want to bring in, but sometimes they're too painful that you want to wait them. At the same time, yeah. you need them. Uh, so, so what what would be your strategy in that sense? So, going back to the ones who who left yeah. you, yeah, it's a challenge. So, I'll, I'll tell you the first and foremost thing. And this is where the planning comes into it is is the hardest thing in, in, in business right now or in any business at any time, but specifically now is the um, over promise and under deliver, right? So you anticipated the machinery coming in, obviously. So you probably promised people that you'd be done or ready at a certain time. And then, you know, pardon the language, but you know, shit happens and things go sideways. Life mm -hmm. happens, right? And it doesn't pan out the way you want. I think the trick on this one is a strict honesty and tell them why. But when we're talking about planning, this is where we always put down uh, percentages and probabilities. So when we look at, I'm going to have a machine, it's going to come in, it's going to do this capacity, I should be able to do this business, is then you start weighing probability. Is it really going to come in in September, ready for October? What are the odds of anything going sideways? So it's the foreseeable, unforeseeable, controllable, non-controllable. Like sometimes things happen, it falls off, it's in a container, it falls into the ocean. Shit, didn't see that happening. Really not much I can do about it. That's something you can go to, to your customers with ahead of time and really get it done. The ones they all hate is you told me it was coming, the machine came, and now it took you four months to get it going, not the month that you thought. But mm -hmm. it's a hard one to answer for you, Rami, because at the end of the day, just straight honesty and you hope to God they'll come back to you. But the over promise under deliver is always a challenge and can really screw up numbers too right because it could hurt future relationships is where which is where i'm assuming that you're a little worried about that's that's right so so wouldn't that undermine your credibility as their manufacturing partner in that sense i mean i mean we don't it want can, to it can yeah. it really depends to me on your candor and honesty if you didn't give me anything no heads up no no like if you weren't clear with me all the way through it can because you've put me in a pickle now. But if you were telling me all the way through, listen, guys, it just landed. It's three weeks late. They sent the wrong plug. The, the voltage, I didn't realize it was Chinese voltage. And it's we don't have it adaptable to Canadian voltage at this point. It's going to take time. I mean, again, if, if I don't know and I'm basing my world on it, you're thinking, well, shit, guys, can you tell me this like months ago? Maybe I could have found an alternate supply for the short term, like anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a tough that's one because it is i mean it's it's relationships i just just be honest with people and tell them if you can't make it just give them lead time if you can 
I think the other part of that, Raman, that's um, less emotional is as you're planning your way through the part that you need, like if you have salespeople, for example, that know these customers really well, is you almost need them to be scoring. You need them to be scoring real, not sales, because salespeople are, um, I, I'm being very generic here. So if you're a salesperson, I, I mean nothing by it. I've, I've been a salesperson in my life too. When you're a salesperson, you're, you're, you tend to be a little bit more dramatic. I scored a big win, you know, like, oh my God, the customer is about to leave us, right? Because that's how we um, transmit messages to the organization. But as you're going through this and you're trying to recover customers from a plant, you know, from a from a process flow change, what you probably need is for those those salespeople who know these people the best to be able to quantify for you. Listen, this this guy is worth 30% of our total volume, but there's only a four out of 10 chance that they're coming back to us, right? That allows you then next year to go, I, I'm pretty sure we've lost that 30% volume. So we need to go find it from some of the other customers, right? Or I know I'm going to lose all to 30. Into our number and it's a different number. Yeah. Next year. Or, I, or I know I'm going to lose all 30 and I'm never going to get it back. And you know, that like, um, the emotional part of that is you want to run away and cry somewhere. And that's totally cool to do later. But when you're planning, it's like, okay, so how much can I bank on? Right. So your, your, your guys should be able to give you, you know, a bit of a, these guys are really angry. So I think I'm going to get them back, but right now it's like a three out of 10. Right. And then there might be some guys that look, we've been communicating with them along. They're really frustrated with us, but they're a nine out of 10. So um, that they're going to come back. So it helps you change your volume. And then it also helps you manage expectations because then when you look at that list, you're going to wind up going, okay, well, if they're a three out of 10, I'm going after the guys who are most likely to come back. Let's make them happy first. And then we'll come back and do the hard ones later, right? And that also helps you structure your volume expectations a little bit different as well. Right. Yeah, that's right. You know, something that we're answer, working on. I'm sure, but. Yeah, no, we're working on our capacity right now and our lead times mm -hmm. are getting very accurate. And thankfully, it was just a couple of them that we kind of, yeah. you know, we misaligned on the expectation, but now we're planning uh, customer appreciation and a lot of things. So so hopefully we can yeah. win the back. Okay, good. Good. good luck. Good, good luck. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, anyone else? And if you don't have questions now, just like be clear, like the, the, the world doesn't shut down in the next five minutes as uh, if you don't have contact, Summoner has them. Like we're always around and we're always willing um, to give help where we can. Right. So like, don't, don't panic if you don't have a question ready. Um, sorry, this is uh, Melanie here from Locality Brewing. Hi. Hi how's it going? Hey, how are um, you? Really good. And I was really looking forward to this. And um, unfortunately, something came up and I missed most of it. So I was just wondering if there, if it's recorded, because um, we're literally doing our annual planning. We're having a retreat in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, I was very much looking forward to this so <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely being recorded so you'll receive a copy most likely this afternoon of it oh perfect okay thank you <laughs> no and i think who we've seen on the podcast mel it's you i can't remember who we got coming on um i think it's me <laughs> okay awesome cool. yeah. we'll talk to you well, soon anyway nice and if to you meet need you. again if you need Thanks. something if you go through the presentation and it's gappy or you're thinking shit i don't know what these guys are talking about just ping Okay. Yeah. I'll fill some of the details yeah. if you need to. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cause we've been, um, we're in our second, well, going into our third year. So we're trying to get more organized um, and strategic planning is kind of, we're trying to map that out and we're doing a three day, like full on, like concentrate on next year retreat with the leadership awesome. group. So awesome. Yeah. Need lots That's of amazing. <laughs> amazing. Good. That's great. Small business doing that. That's fantastic. That's seriously. Yeah, that's really, it really is. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> you. don't be afraid to si assign them homework. Um, yes, it's it's, it's actually, a good way to mentally get them, you know, in the game before they get there. Right. So yeah. They've actually, they're very eager. They've done probably more. I've been more kind of like trying to figure out the structure of how it's all going to work. And um, yeah. already, um, I think they've the two people that, um, are very eager to kind of move forward with this type of structure. So <laughs> oh, that's exciting. 
And so yeah. if you want, if, if you want yeah. to even pop it off to us before, if you, I mean, we can, we can take a yeah. quick look at it. I mean, we, I don't think we, I mean, if you just want some insight or maybe there's something there, we said, you know, maybe a little more time on this, a little less time on that. Like we can give you some, some advice for That'd what it's worth. And then did you talk at all about um, team building as part of uh, like an annual, like kind of again to reinforce good communication? Not so much on this one. Okay. It's yeah, we didn't. Part. But it's an important part. Yeah. You didn't do it on this one. Yeah. But we we've done it before. I've been involved in in year ends and sort of the AGMs where we've done a bit of stuff like that too because it, it's important to have your team um, work together. They don't have to love each other, but they definitely have to work together. Yeah. They love each other. It's a bonus. So yeah. so Melanie's Melanie's got a good point, right? Is if you are doing this um, the way they're doing it as a uh, a retreat or something like that. Um, it's it's good to do a team builder of some sort. You probably need to look at um, there, there's a moment where you almost need to be a bit of a psychologist or a sociologist on this one and think about like what is it that um, you know what is it that the team needs more of, right? So one of the teams I'm working with, they're very stressed out. They're a very stressed out team, right? And so the team builder is about building bridges and communication, but then wicking away some of that stress so we can actually get to a conversation that works, right? Sometimes it's about, um, you know, this stakeholder isn't going to work with state, that stakeholder. They don't communicate well. So then you want to find a team builder that's going to help break down some of those barriers so that you can get them better talking to each other, right? So um, anytime that you want to do those sort of things, you want to be thinking about what is it that I need like so fun is really great fun is always it breaks down lots of barriers but you do want to think about like what is it that I'm trying to accomplish so I can find fun. activities yeah yeah and Melanie I'll add as well that I think uh, we've had another webinar this in the past this year on team building um, so I can mm -hmm. look for that Perfect. and then send you the the recording as well that That's would awesome. be because I need all the help I can get because I want this to We've had some issues um, just with our past, some past members, um, great people, but it just now looking back, it was kind of quite toxic and time consuming mm. and kind of a leaned out team that's, um, I think we're all on the same page. So I just want to kind of move forward in a much more positive way and ensure that we don't end up back in that communication style. That we have the fact you're thinking about it, Melanie. The fact that you're talking about it, yeah, and you realize it's a, it's a lot easier to correct. Yeah, it's when you when you put your head in the sand and you don't want to see it. At least you're seeing it. I mean, realistically, if you talk that way, you probably got super good odds that you'll fix it. May not be perfect, but you'll be able to do it because at least you see it. So good for you. Hopefully, <laughs> always a hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> amazing, awesome. Hey, well. Doesn't look like there's any more questions. And uh, like Kenny and Phil said, if you do have any other questions, feel free Bob to uh, yeah, reach out to me and I can get you connected with uh, Phil and Kenny. And no, no, Kenny meant Ask Sumner. I, I, I asked Sumner. <laughs> we're, we're joking. We're joking. We're joking. We love you. We love you. We, you. We, love you. <laughs> we know that. We love you. I'm just teasing you. We like teasing Sumner. Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, two-way thing. <laughs> It's much more of a one-way thing sometimes with the two of you and me, but that's yeah, okay. Truth be told is Summoner, I like picking on Kenny, actually. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Kenny. We're good. I got thick skin. You're, <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Susan. Wonderful. Thank so, yeah, on that note, uh, I think we'll end it here. Um, Phil and Kenny, thank you so much for Our presenting pleasure. again today. And we do have another one. Uh, booked with you guys in January. So um, if people are interested again to to join, check back in in January for another presentation from these wonderful guys. And on something. Yeah, on something. <laughs> yeah, still nailing that down. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but always appreciate it. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, I will be sending the time with out us. a yeah. survey. Uh, and a follow-up email. So if you could please yeah. fill the survey out, it's very brief and it just lets us know, you know, how um, it went today and what we can do for the future. So yeah. appreciate it. Awesome. awesome. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.